lose the valuable papers. You're a prodigy, eh? Help! Well, I'm going to make you smart on both ends. Help! Murder! Police! Oh! What are you... Help! Murder! Police! Get your Help. hands off that child. Let go of him, you big bully. But my briefcase... You should be very proud of yourself going about beating poor little children. Oh, let me explain. Don't change the subject. Now, listen, lady. You want to be ashamed. I'm taking some very important papers to Aiken, South Carolina. There's no excuse. If you lay another hand on him, I'll have him throw you off at the next stop. Come on, Junior. Look. Oh! Oh, you... you little... When your sister's quick thinking saved your life that time, why were you fooling with the man's papers? It's on account of Professor Jordan's theory. What? Professor George's theory about people with wavy brown hair. What are you talking about? You see, Professor Jordan has promulgated a theory that people with wavy brown hair are extremely apt to become violent when subjected to constant irritation. And the gentleman has wavy brown hair, hasn't he? Oh, yes, a fine specimen. I was bored by the chip until I saw him. Now, let me see. How can I annoy him until we arrive at Aiken? Oh, Porter. Did you find out the number of Miss Pemberton's reservation? Miss Pemberton? Yes, sir. She's in drawing room A. That's the young lady just give you the business, sir. <laughs> what? Oh. Why, you little... I want to go to two... Ah, I saw it first. Look. Oh, Junior. Oh, Junior, all over you. Oh. I'll be going right back to the station. Okay. Welcome to Pemberton Manor, sir. The family is expecting you. They knew I was coming? They're most anxious to meet you, sir, naturally. You took a cab, sir. We sent a car to the airport for you. But I came by train. Oh, it'll not be necessary to announce you. You can freshen up a bit in there and join the family in the drawing room. Thanks. This window will be regarded by future generations as my masterpiece. I can see it years from now. Set up in the loo like a shrine. I'm no longer a surrealist. I'm a post-surrealist. What are you doing now, Herbert? I call it the love life of a cup and saucer. My goodness. Are they that way, too? Mm. Now, here, here is a rare item. Found only in the collection of the Tsar Nicholas II of Russia. This is a Moldavia, 1858. This stamp really has a very interesting history. I'm sure it has, Alan. But what could it cancel stamps? You can't mail letters with them. Uh, oh, here he is at last. How do you do? How do you do? I'm Tony's mother. I'm Henry McMorrow. And uh, this is her brother, Herbert, and her uncle, Alan. Alan is my brother, and Herbert right. being Tony's brother makes, uh, makes Herbert my son. <laughs> oh, I'm Alice Pemberton. What would you say your name was? Henry McMorrow. Oh, stop joshing me. I know it's Howard. Uh, no, it's Henry. Oh, but I distinctly know better. I remember very well reading Tony's letter. She said I had become engaged to a man named Howard Rogers. So, you see, your name can't be Henry. Say, are you interested in philately? Uh, no, I'm Henry McMorrow, Parsons Hilton Trent McMorrow. Mrs. Pemberton. Yes? Cook's drunk again. Oh, dear. <laughs> That's twice this week, not including a day off. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. Say, would you mind... You better look on the last year's fellow. I wonder what's the matter with him. Well, there's always something the matter with Tony's fiancés. Perhaps he hasn't any money. Have you any money? Uh, yes, I have. Oh, well, it must be something else. Perhaps he's a little bit feeble-minded. Perhaps. Say, uh... I would like to ask... I've sent your luggage to the green room, sir. This way, please. Uh oh, just I'm a minute, afraid you'll find it a little uh, crowded. I'd like to explain. There are a couple of old easels, some uh, paints and but brushes. But see, I'm not... Uh, but I don't but listen, I must explain. Long, you never do Wait it. a minute. Now, there's been a big mistake. Where is Mr. Pemberton? There is Mr. Pemberton, sir. But... 
Mr. Pemberton, I'm Henry McCall. Please, Parsons, I'm sir. very busy. Uh, but Mr. Pemberton, please. Mr. Pemberton. Please come back some other time. Please come listen. back next week, next month. I have a I'm very busy. My daughter's bringing my son here for the holidays. Welcome home. Hello. He's in the study. I hope you had a pleasant journey. Yes, thank you, Wilbur. Will you see that the bags are taken care of? Hello, Papa. Welcome home, Junior. <laughs> What's this? You're surprised. Papa bought it for your homecoming. Just what you wrote me you wanted. A toy. I meant a real one. A real bear? I don't think we could do that, Junior. You remember your African ostrich and all the trouble we had with the neighbors. I'm afraid you'll have to be satisfied with this one. A teddy bear. It's too adolescent. <laughs> Papa, he kicked me. Uh, that's silly, Junior. How could he? I've been here all the time. Not here, in the depot. He kicked me in a public place. Now, just a minute. Please let me explain, Hold Mr. Pemberton. I'll go get help. Is this true, young man? Did you kick my son? Please, Mr. Pemberton, let me explain. What is the meaning of this? Who are you, anyway? This I... is Miss Tony's fiancé, sir. Miss Tony's fiancé. No, there's a misunderstanding. If you just let me talk to you for a minute. Hello, Papa. Now, Tony, this is really going too far. You've got to be more careful about what sort of fiancés you bring around here. This fellow claims he just kicked Junior. Oh, I didn't say that. Kicked Junior? If you weren't Tony's fiancé, I'd rend you limb from limb. He's not my fiancé. He's a brute who struck Junior. Who struck oh. Junior, huh? He's a beast. Call the police. Yes, yes. Call the police. Oh, Junior. Call the Shut up. Now, I've stood about enough of this. You people listen to me. My name is McMahon. I'm not engaged to this young lady or any young lady. I came here on business, and you mistook me for somebody else. Isn't he your fiancé? No. Are you sure? Oh, absolutely. Oh, well, then that settles everything. It doesn't settle anything. I came here to talk business. Oh, you're the lawyer who wrote all those letters from New York. Well, at last we're getting somewhere. You remember, Papa, I gave them to you. Oh, yes, letters. Papa? Papa, have you been throwing your mail away again? Now, Papa, you promised not to do that anymore. I have so many things to think about. What, what does it concern? Remember, I told you all about it. Mr. Mc... Uh, Mc... Uh, McMorrow. Uh, uh, McWatts is here. It represents a kennel club. A hunt club in Westchester. Oh, yes. Well, anyway, they want to buy the farm Grandpa left us. Mm, well, I don't think we ought to do business with a man who goes around kicking children. Oh, well, Herbert, it's very simple. All we do is sign a paper, and Mr. Mc... Uh, what's this here gives us $100,000. No. $1,000 each? Uh, no. Now, if, if you just let me explain the situation. The Westchester Hunt Club wishes to buy this tract of land to enlarge its premises and is willing to pay $100,000, which you heirs will then divide. Now, inasmuch as your deceased grandfather, Mr. Herbert Tillamook Pemberton, died intestate... Mrs. Pemberton? Yes? Stop throwing eggs at the Iceman. Oh, my goodness. Tell her to stop. Eggs at 45 cents a dozen. I told her and told her, but she won't stop. She's been drinking Mr. Herbert's sherry, and she says he reminds her of her second husband, and he beat her. Oh, Herbert beats uh, Cook? Or does she mean the Iceman? Oh, well, I guess we'll have to lock her in the mop closet again. Call Wilbur. Oh, excuse me, please. I have to see about the dinner. <laughs> dinner? Oh, I must dress. You'll excuse me, please. Excuse me. Excuse me. Junior. Did you kick Junior hard? Oh, not hard at all. I'd scarcely call it a kick. Oh, that's too bad. I suppose you think we're all a little crazy. A little crazy? I wouldn't say that. Well, excitable, then. We're excitable. You see, Grandfather raised us all, and he believed that everyone should live absolutely without inhibitions. Just do anything you want, anytime you want. Yeah, it's great if you can get away with it, but I imagine the police might object occasionally. Oh, they do occasionally. Like the time Mama went waiting in the fountain at the plaza. But the judge only fined her $100, and I think that's very cheap for doing what you want to, don't you? If you have the 100 Oh, well, she lost her purse in the fountain, but she borrowed the money from the judge. Have you a comb? No. Well, you better get one because your hair's a little muscly and you look a little flustered. Well, I guess the excitement kind of got me. <clears throat> you know, if this wasn't my last chance, I'd run away from here and let somebody else do this job. Your last chance? Sure. If I don't put this deal through, there'll be one name less on the firm stationery. Oh, my goodness. We mustn't let that happen. That's terrible. Uh, have you a wife and some children to support? No. Oh, well, then it wouldn't be so bad. I know you've got a poor old mother. Well, I have. Now, I tell you what I'll do. I'll bring the whole family together after dinner and explain to them how serious the situation is. Then you can get their signatures and you won't lose your job and your poor old mother will be all right. But, uh, well, thanks very much. You're welcome. <laughs> nice of you to help me. Well, I suppose I'd better go to the hotel and change if I'm coming back for dinner. Yes. Is my cab still waiting? No, sir. I paid the men and sent him away. But my bag? In the green room. There's a misunderstanding. Will you get it for me, please? I'm sorry, sir. I can't lift it. My arm hurts where the cook kicked me when we locked her in the mop closet. Oh, please stay, Mr. Uh, McMorrow. McMorrow, we have plenty of room. Well, all right. <laughs> Thanks very much. Uh, not at all. Oh, just a minute. Do you believe in Professor Jordan's theory? Professor Jordan? I've never heard of him. Well, you will. 